AP Computer Science A. Uh, this is the office hours for P5I, the horse barn, horse problem. This is a, part B was pretty challenging. I had some issues. I mean, at first it might not seem that much, but uh, it's, it's, it's pretty challenging. Hopefully you've tried this, put a lot of effort into it in your group. And now I'm going to, you know, tried a bunch of different things, ran some problems. Um, so a quick review, we have interface horse, uh, which is just group behavior. Um, we created like race horses that, that uh, implement the interface horse. So they had get name and get weights in them. Um, there's a horse barn class where we're gonna ride our methods. It has an array of uh, horse objects uh, called spaces. Part A, you're supposed to um, return the index of the space that contains the horse with a specified name. No two horses in the barn have the same name. If you can't find it, return negative one. So that one, that one's, I think, a little more straightforward. Um, so, you know, public int find horse base. I'll show you two approaches. I mean, uh, it takes an argument string, the name of the horse you're looking for. And uh, the best thing is just go through a for loop, find the horse and return it. And if you don't find it, return negative one. So for int index equals zero, index less than spaces dot length. You don't want to put in the hard number in it. it. Should work for any size. Dot length is for arrays. Index plus plus. Now also just this video is something that you're probably doing near to your test. So for your test, uh, I just want to remind you to remember our common string methods, okay? That we've been using since last semester. Um, dot index of is super helpful in finding certain things in the strings. Dot contains can be another good method. Um, anyways, just keep those in mind. All right, so back to this. Um, now, it is possible that the spaces are null. So we do need to check if they are null first. If we don't, we will get a null pointer exception. So we'd have to say something like if spaces index, let's say does not equal null. If it equals null, we just don't want to do anything. We're going to skip it, right? So if it doesn't equal null, that's good. Um, and then we could do a separate if in here, or you could do a whole super long compound if right here, but I don't know, I feel like it's easier really just to separate it. So for each space, spaces, I'm gonna, I'm gonna call the, get the horse object out of it, which I know has a get name method. On AP test, you wouldn't have had to code that. You just rely on the fact that you know it's there. Get name. And it's a string, so we have to use dot equals, not equal equals, uh, the name that they asked us to find. If that is true, we found it, and we should return the current index, the current location. And you just keep doing that through the whole for loop. If you get through the whole for loop after the for loop, if it gets here, that means it never returned anything, and we just say return negative one. We don't have to check anything. Like we know if it gets this point, it did not uh, find it, okay? Now, an alternative approach, just to be fun, I guess, like could we pull this off with a for each loop? And I will show you, I think, my best attempt at it. Um, I don't think it's a good idea. The whole point of for each loops is to kind of abbreviate the work. Um, the main reason you, uh, a for each loop isn't great for this is that you're trying to return the location. 
Um, and 4-H loops don't really keep track of the location. They don't have a counter that we have access to. So, I mean, essentially what we would have to do is create a counter before the for each loop. And we would have to force a counter to count. So we're going to add stuff into the for each loop that a for loop has. So it seems kind of like it defeats the point. But whatever, just for fun. Uh, a for each loop, you have to identify the ki kinds of objects in the array array list. Give a temporary variable name, which is usually associated with the object type. Then the name of the array or array list. Some of you guys have put like S for this. That it makes more sense to write H. So that's your for each loop. Now in here, you have to, again, make sure that it's uh, not null. If H doesn't equal null, then, and then we can check if H dot get name dot equals name, then we found it and we want to return the index. Now, the first time through, the index is zero because we created it before the for each loop and set it to zero. Um, if we don't find it, then we have to manually increment the, in, the, the index, the counter, before the next run through the for each loop. If we get through the whole thing without returning anything, then we should return a negative one. So there's a way of doing a <laughs> doing it with a for each loop, but it looks like more work. So I would not do it like that. It's more work. For each loops are supposed to be less work. So not really a good job for a for each loop. Okay. Um, now part B is the it's simple an idea, but it's much more difficult to uh, figure out correctly. So consolidate, what it does is it um, takes all the empty spaces and puts them at the end and all the horses stay in the same order. So they give you an example on the next page. This is the, in your, in your driver, you should test all these for part A. And then part B, I think I helped you guys create all these in the driver ahead of time. So part B, uh, create this horse barn and try and run consolidate and consolidate just shifts silver to the second spot patches is the third third spot and two to the fourth spot and all the nulls are at the end so pretty like you know basic idea you know what we're trying to do there so this is part b uh public void doesn't return anything. It just makes changes to the uh, private instance variables. So consolidate. Um, and it doesn't take any arguments. It just, you just access the private instance variable and kind of organizes it. Now, um, my first idea, my first attempt at this, because I, I really got stuck on this myself, was I'm like, okay, well, let's do a, let's do a for loop. I don't think for each loop is good for this because we're, we're moving things from different spots and can't really do that. And let's go through the, let's go through the whole thing, spaces.length. And so index plus plus. So I said, okay, I thought, okay, well, if, uh, if it's null, if the current spot is null, let's let's do something. So what I did, I said, okay, so I'm thinking, okay, if the current spot's null, let's move everything after it down one and put a null at the end. That's sort of my strategy. Does that make sense as a possible strategy? If we hit a null, let's move everything to the right, left one spot, just everything to the right. So what we need is a separate for loop in here for when we encounter a null. Only if it's empty do we want to move everything down. So it has to have a different counter and we want to start it at the current spot, the current location. So I'm going to set it equal to index, not zero, to index. 
and I'm say uh, j is less than spaces dot length. Um, and I'm going to say j plus plus. Okay, and I'm going to say okay. Well, the current space we're going to say spaces j, the current spot gets the spot to the right of it, spaces j plus 1. Okay? So I'm going to move them all down first. Okay? Um, there's something you got to watch out for. If I just go less than spaces, if I go to the last spot, which spaces.length minus 1 is the last spot in the array because we started 0, then I'm going to try and access one spot beyond it, and I'm going to get an out-of-bounds exception. So I need to do minus 1 here for sure. Okay? Um, with that same idea, I don't really want to check the last spot here. If I get to the last spot, I don't need to check it because if it's null, then it's where it should be. If it's not null, that's fine. The whole horse barn was, you know, full of things because I've, once I get to the last spot, I've found earlier null spots and put them at the end. So I should put a minus one here also, because if I don't, it's also going to potentially you know, cause something to happen. And I, I just don't need to check it. So if I do that, then after I'm done with that for loop, I'm going to go back and change the last spot. So my strategy is essentially this. I hit a null spot, so I move everything down one spot, everything down one spot, and then I put the null at the end. Okay? So I'm just taking care of one at a time. So at the end, spaces.length uh, minus 1 is going to equal null because that's the last spot. Um, and so that, that's kind of my and, – and then I – then remember because it's kind of – it's almost like an array list where you remove something. I may have just moved a new null into the spot of the previous null. Anytime you have more than one null in a row – you're going to move a new null into the spot, the old null, so you have to go back and check it. So kind of like with the array list, I need to, uh, after this for loop, if, if we did this, I need to make sure that I decrement my original index to recheck that spot. Okay? And then I'm thinking, okay, well, that'll work. There's a problem with this. Okay? The problem is, is that once we get all the nulls at the end and I find that it's a null and then I keep moving all the nulls after it down one and putting, I just, what I keep doing is I, you know, if I have a bunch of nulls at the end, eventually I get them all the end. I keep saying, oh, well, I found a null. So let's move this one down, move this one down, put this at the end and let's recheck this spot because of this right here, right? And so I just keep doing it over and over again. And it never finishes. As soon as I get all the nulls to the end, I get stuck. Okay? So I, I, I have to have a different strategy. This is not going to work. And I think that's the problem I got into. But I think we can kind of tweak it. I have a better strategy that I didn't come up with. But it, it's, it's actually a common strategy that I think will be good to keep in our mind. But... Uh, instead, this isn't going to work, but I'm going to take something almost the same. I'm just going to rewrite it here. So that's not going to work, but we can tweak it. We're going to have to add something in to, to take care of this like uh, endless loop stuff going on at the end. So on the, um, the beginning of it is the same. And we don't need to check the last spot. You just don't need to. Because once you get to the end, it's either a null because you put a null there, and so it's fine, or it's not a null because you never put any nulls there because you didn't find any nulls, and the whole horse barn is full. So we're still going to check. You still got to check if it's null. We only want to do something if the current spot is null. So this will be a lot like that last strategy. 
but we're going to put something in. Now, um, instead of what we had in there, we're going to have another check. Okay. We're going to, we're going to check if the next spot. Okay. Sorry. I need to write the, the for loop. Okay. So I'm going to do a for loop just like I did that starts at the current spot and goes through the rest of the array, but just does from where we currently are. Okay. Okay, so I'm going to do that. But before I decide to do anything, I'm not going to just move everything. I'm going to, what my strategy is, is going to be is to look for the next non-null. So I don't want to move a null into the spot. So I'm trying to get around, what I'm trying to get around is having to decrement the counter and then get stuck, okay? So I don't want to do that. So my solution is let's make sure that we find, let's only, let's not just move everything down one. Let's just, let's just swap two spots the current null spot with the next non-null spot because they got to stay in order. So I'm going to say, all right, is the next spot, if the next spot is not null, okay, if it's not null, cool, let's let's swap those. Let's put, uh, let's put that spaces index or, yeah, spaces index. You want to keep track of that spot where you found the null, um, we're going to put that non-null horse in there. Now, if we do that, then we're, we're doing a little swap here. So then space is J plus one is going to get the null. You got to do, you got to put this one in there first before you do null. Otherwise you just lose. Like we know a null is going to go there, so we don't have to keep track of it. Now, if we do that, we're, we're done for the current spot. And to force this inner for loop to end, we're going to set our counter j to spaces.length minus one. Okay. And that if will be done. And then what it'll do, and, and, and the, the for loop will be done because of that, right? Now, what happens is the next spot is null, then we go to the next spot. And we keep looking until we find a horse. And once we find them, we do this little swap. Okay. And um, that means for sure, we're never going to put a null. We're not going to move an, a, a, a later null into an earlier null. So we don't have to do this whole index minus minus thing, which solves our problem. And so then we go back up here and we go back to this for loop. We look at the next spot. If it's null, we do this whole little dance. If it's not null, we just leave it. But once we find a null one, instead of just moving everything from the right to the left one and putting the null at the end, which works for a while, but it gets stuck in the end, what we do is look for the next non-null, put it there so we don't keep checking it. Okay. Now, once all the nulls are at the end, it'll just, it'll do this thing, but it won't find a new null and so nothing will happen and it'll just go to the next one, right? It, like if it never finds another horse, it looks for it, but if it never finds it, it it just moves on because nothing nothing happens. So anyways, that's, that's a way to do it. But there are some much, I mean, to me, that's like where my head went when I was doing this problem. But there are some other techniques that are actually pretty common and good good for some other problems. We're going to see these techniques pop up. So these are just some good skills to learn. So let me show you the better way, I think, of doing this. And there's a couple ways to do it. They're both kind of similar in idea. But they use something called auxiliary arrays or auxiliary array list. Auxiliary array um or auxiliary array list make sure i'm 
spelling aug I'm not spelling auxiliary correct. Auxil I A R. So auxiliary array or auxiliary array list. Now in math, a lot of times, and we, we use this term in math sometimes, auxiliary. Essentially, you create something sort of temporary to help you accomplish a job, okay? And that's what we're going to do here is we're going to create an extra array or an extra array list to help us help facilitate this, okay? And um, it's, kind of, it's kind of slick. It's way, and, and it, it totally makes sense, and it's a lot less complicated and doesn't have the issue. So public void consolidate. I'm going to show you two different ways of doing it. Consolidate. No arguments. So we're, we're doing the next one. So what we're going to do right at the beginning is create a new array of horse objects. And I will call it new spaces. And it will hold horse objects. It will have the same length as spaces. Okay. And I'm I I'm going to do a for loop to go through the spaces array, but I I need another counter before the for loop to keep track. What I'm going to do here's my basic uh, strategy here is I'm going to go through the spaces array, and every time I find a horse, I'm just going to put it in here, and I'm going to skip all the null spots. And then leave all the null spots for the end. And then copy this array back into that array and we're done. So I need a counter to keep track of where I want to put the next horse. Okay, which isn't going to line up to where it is in the other array. So then I'm going to do a for loop int index 0 index less than spaces dot length don't put minus one here um, index plus plus and I'm just going to check okay is the current spot in spaces if it's not null Okay, because if it's null, I don't want to do anything. So it's better to go with the one you're going to do. I don't want an if else here. I don't want to say if it's null, don't do anything else. Let's do something. Well, then what's the point? Let's just go to the one scenario where we're going to do something. So if it's not null, then new spaces is going to get that horse at the spot we want it to. Not at index. Okay. It's going to get the horse at index in spaces. Okay. And then I need to increment. If I put a horse in here, then I need to increment my counter, which is separate from the for loop. So next spot plus plus. Okay. So what that'll do is look for a horse. If it's, if, if it's null, it just doesn't do anything. If it's horse, it's, oh, okay, let's put that horse into this new array. But we got to put them in order, right? I don't want to put these horses exactly in the same spots because otherwise you haven't done anything. You've just copied it in there and you still have the same problem. Now, when you're done, this new spaces should have all the horses at the front. And in fact, by default, it'll have nulls in the other spots. So we don't have to go back through and do another for loop to fill all the nulls, okay? Um, I mean, you could come up with a strategy to do that, but but at the end, we need to copy this one into this one. And since they're both arrays and they both have the same length, you can just say spaces equals new spaces. We're not returning anything. It's void, right? But that would do it right there. That's an auxiliary array. Now, you could also do something like that with an array list. Um, and the array list has, uh, I mean, there's a couple ways. I mean, you could, you could just create an array list and copy these things into them. But then at the end, you'd have to do another for loop to copy everything that's in the array, um, in, in the array list into the array. It would need, you would need a separate for loop here. 
Okay. Um, so you could do that. There's a couple ways to attack this, but we're going to create an array list at the beginning, auxiliary array list that holds horses. And I'll go and call it new spaces. So similar idea, different structure. And it's just going to be length zero at first. Okay. So there's, there's a couple techniques. Okay. We could, um, we could copy everything into the array list because then we could use the remove function to get rid of the null spots. So um, All right, let's see. There's like kind of two versions of this. So one is we could kind of take the same strategy here and say if um, spaces index not doesn't equal null, then we could put it into this. Now we don't need a separate counter because with the array list, we're just going to add them onto the end. So you would just say uh, new spaces dot add um, spaces index. All right. And that would just copy them all in. Um, Right, that would just copy all the horses into the array list. Um, we can't just set spaces equal new spaces because they're different types of, you know, one's an array, one's an array list. So you can't do that. Um, so what you would have to do now, here's, here's another thing that you're going to have to do. Uh, I'm going to leave some space here, but the easiest thing if, if we're going to copy these into uh, spaces, then there's still that the stuff after this where there should be nulls are going to have some horses and stuff. So then we would have to do, I mean, we could do it. Um, the, the easier thing is just fill once, once you've done this first, you have to do this. Then you could just fill a uh, horse um, or you could just fill spaces with a bunch of nulls. Okay. In fact, I think we could even do it as we're doing it here. We could say, we could say spaces. <coughs> you could do a separate for loop to fill it with nulls, but I think we could just say every time we find a not null and add it to here, then, then we, we, we have it. And then we can just go ahead and say spaces index equals null, right, at the same time. So then spaces is full of nulls after that. And then down here, you could say, okay, for int index equals zero, index is less than, I want to do new spaces dot size, it's an array list. And what I want to do is I want to put everything that's in new spaces into spaces from the beginning. Now, new spaces has less objects than spaces, has spots. But I want to put them all at the beginning, but that's why I'm going to stop at spaces.size. It makes a difference. Equals uh, new spaces dot get index. So that would copy them all in there and we would be good. That, that would be it, okay? Uh, a little different approach is instead of this, um, before this, you would still do this at the end. You would say, okay, let's do a for loop 
and let's uh, copy. Well, you do a couple for loops. So I think that, that, that one's probably the quicker one. But this is kind of an interesting approach. I, I, I kind of like it just because it's a little different kind of strategy. Um, you would want to um, copy everything from spaces into new spaces. New spaces dot add. Um, spaces index. Okay, so you do that for loop, okay? Then you would do another for loop. And we can keep using an index as long as it's not inside the other for loop. Now this time I'm going to do new spaces dot size because my strategy here is to take remove all the nulls from new spaces. Okay? And so I have to make sure my counter is based off new spaces size because it's going to get smaller and smaller as I remove things. So then I say, well, if new spaces dot get index equal equals null, if it equal equals null, then I'm going to say new spaces dot remove index. So what it what I did is I copied everything from spaces into new spaces. Then I went back through and it looked for in new spaces. And if it was null, I removed it. Okay. And then I would copy everything in new spaces back into spaces. But the problem here is that I I don't I, I didn't solve the uh, problem that I need nulls out after the end. So I would probably need another for loop right here. In index, well, there's 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 a couple ways. Okay, you could either fill spaces all with nulls which is a little more work, but straightforward. Or you could ask, okay. So you could do that, index equals zero. Um, in fact, we only have to put nulls at the end and we know where it's gonna be because of the size of new spaces now, okay? So, uh, up to you. There's a couple different ways of dealing with this. I'm showing you lots of different ideas. I think it's good just because sometimes one of these might work really well, another problem, another one might not. Um, in this case, you could just say spaces uh, index equals null. Just fill it with nulls. Okay, so you do all three of these Okay, instead of this. Okay, so I think that our first approach was better, was simpler. Okay, the other idea, and this just goes back to null, and we could apply that, we could have used this idea with the first one, but this was a little slicker just to change it, change the non nulls to nulls right after we encountered them because we would go through all of them. Here we couldn't do that um, because we copied them into another array list and then found them and then they, they're not lining up anymore. Um, the other idea is that after you copy new spaces into spaces, you could have another for loop. And so this would be instead of this or instead of this approach, you could just say, okay, well, let's put nulls in just at the end. So you would want to start at new spaces dot size. Now, let's make sure we're starting in the right spot. Yeah, so that would be the spot right after dot size is like if if new spaces is seven horses, dot size is going to give you um, seven, but the last spot was six. So I think if we want to start at seven, 
Okay, that's the starting point. We want the index to be less than spaces.length. And then what we do is we just say, okay, well, spaces index. These are just all the last spots that should be null, that might not be null depending on what we, we've done. Okay, so this is sort of like you could you could do this, or you could do this, or you could put the nulls in after the fact in just the right spots. It takes a little more thought this way. These other ways are a little more just like fill with nulls. Uh, before you copy the other ones in, and then you don't have to worry about it. This this way is like, okay, we're going to copy all the horses in first, and then we're going to put nulls in for all the last spots. So anyways, uh, this was a tough, complicated problem. You know, I showed you several different ways of doing it, um, several very different approaches. That first one, these ones involved auxiliary array and array list. The auxiliary array, I think, was the... the a nice easy approach. I think that worked really well. Um, just because then you could just, you know, set them equal to each other. The array list had some more kind of interesting kind of approaches of using the way array lists work, but it had some other challenges too. So, anyways, I hope that helps and uh, make sure you're ready for your test. You know, the free response problems we've done from this unit. Um, are good practice for those. This was just one of three. So, okay. Oh, shoot. And I forgot to do something. If we take the remove approach, if we take the remove approach, we have to do index minus minus because if there's two in a row, we will uh, we will skip the next one. So I'm glad I got that before my video ended. <laughs> Classic mistake.